I'm so excited to see you tonight. First day, baby. First day, I can't wait. First day. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of First Date. My guest today has a brand new special on YouTube called Terrified, but you may know him from Impractical Jokers. Give it up for Sal Volcano. Here I am. Thank you. Thanks in the booth. Man, I'm so excited you're here. I'm excited to be here. Haven't seen you since the Hey Babe podcast. That's right. That's right. That was a minute ago. Yeah. Still our most elegantly dressed person by a by a country (laughs) mile, whatever that means. No one has ever come in there outside of sweatpants. You came in and in, you came in an evening attire. I did. I mean, and I got. I think it was like a bedazzled heel, possibly. Probably. Yeah. Knowing me. Yeah, you really. We were like, whoa. We felt more important than we were. No. Uh, yeah. I man, I gotta say that your podcast is the funnest podcast I've ever been on. Is that right? Yeah. Good. No offense to any of the other podcasts. <laughs> you say that to all the podcasts. No, I guys. don't. Actually, I don't. We can go back and we can we can fact check. <laughs> um. Uh, it was nice to have you. Man, okay, so let's get right into it. So let's I've got appetizer questions, main course, dessert, you know how it Yes, the, yes, yes. You know how it goes. Okay, where is the worst place to take a first date? Uh, yeah, I mean, any, any place like r- pretty noisy, I would say, is terrible, right? Like, so you can't get like a good conversation in. Yeah. Like, I would say like the track, well, the track might be fun, actually. The track's probably a good date. Like like a like a outdoor like ho- running, like a horse running track? No, I was thinking like, because in, <laughs> the Indy 500 I went to okay. once, and you couldn't hear anything. It was like, literally, like, it goes by, and it's like earth rattling in your chest, and it's like, well, this is intense. But like, so when I said track, I meant that. But then I thought about the the horse track, which I think might be a really good date, actually. Yeah. A horse, horse races are really fun. Yeah. You got drinks and food and it's like a light atmosphere and it's outside but you can go inside but it's fun you're gambling you don't need to know how to gamble you're cheering yeah, on the you horses just pick a horse you plenty bet of time on to it. chat you know like mm-hmm. win money maybe yeah it's not expensive but it's like but it takes a while yeah i think it's good entertainment but it still leaves the door open to be able to have like bullshit and stuff like that yeah i agree yeah horse races are so fun it's my new yeah. favorite sporting event i went to the kentucky derby oh yeah recently yeah. how'd you like that oh i that's loved a bit it. of a shit show it, but it yeah. was so fun. Did and you wear like a bonnet and stuff like that? I wore a hat. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a bonnet? What, what's the difference between a hat and a bonnet? Then? I think a bonnet reminds me of a shower cap. Okay. Okay. Like Does it's it? like it looks like a mushroom on your head. Okay. Okay. I thought and, a bonnet was like what they do down there for or that. Or actually a bonnet is like an old like milkmaid <laughs> thing where you have like the tie around the yeah. neck. And it's like. But don't they wear that at the horse no, races? No, I didn't like wear a, a bonnet. So. Okay. All right. Fine. <laughs> they wear them at like showers, right? Too like they wear them at showers. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I I feel like a bonnet. Like you should wear a bonnet. Bring <laughs> bring bonnets back. You know, like, <laughs> just show up in a bonnet. Where am I gonna wear a bonnet to? That's the horse the, races. Anywhere though. Anywhere. Wear a bonnet to the market. See what happens. Document it. Let me know. I'd like to know. I will. I'll I'll, I'll film myself the next time I wear a bonnet, and I'll yeah. send it. I'll Have you ever you worn a video. bonnet? I don't know. Has I don't. anyone here ever worn a bonnet? No. <laughs> Has anyone here ever owned a bonnet? Has anyone here ever had a family member or a friend that's worn a bonnet? No one here is from the 1800s. The, this is what this is, but this is what I'm saying. Like, 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 like it's original. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've never seen anyone in a bonnet. I didn't know that the worst first date question was going to lead to you <laughs> <laughs> promoting the, the bringing the bonnets back. Never mind the first date. It's just I'm just I'm trying to get my messaging in here, and it's more bonnets. Okay, more bonnets. Heard. We're gonna get into some main course questions now. Are you a prankster in relationships? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Has anyone ever pranked you on a date? No, I don't think so. I mean, like, I, you know, the, the show itself that we do is like, you know, it is, it involves like, it's pretty involved and it's hidden camera and it's like, you know, it has elements of surprise in it and I guess pranks, but it's like a lot of times I get asked like, so what do you like in your real life? <laughs> and I don't want to let anyone down, but there are just no pranks going. <laughs> the biggest prank I've ever pulled was like when I was little at my mom, you know, like the kitchen sinks when we were little, like, you know that like the hose that comes out where you can like spray the dish, yeah. it's like a little gun yeah. and you spray the dish. So like it was plastic when we were little. If you took like uh, tape, like like scotch tape, and you tied it around the handle so that the handle stayed closed, when your mom or whoever oh. would open it, it would just shoot at them and hit them. And I did that a lot as a kid. That was the extent of my pranks. Oh as man! As a kid, so I'm not really that. Guy. Yeah, I'm not really that guy. And what would life. happen when you would do that to your mom? Yeah, she'd like get you know pretty upset. But the greatest thing about it is like she never checked again. So I would do it like sometimes five times in a day. 
Oh my and every, gosh. every third time, it really starts playing dividends. <laughs> yeah, for me and my <laughs> friends and stuff like that. Yeah, she gets so you know she would chase me probably around the table, um, and I would avoid her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she 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 would she would catch me, but sometimes if I was able to get around the dining room table on opposite sides, there was really no way she can get me after that. Yeah, yeah, very strategic moves there. Yeah, and then I'd run down the hall and I'd slide underneath my bunk bed, it's like I was sliding into home plate. Right. So she couldn't catch me. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was your prank. Yeah, that was that, that was really it. Otherwise, not. no. On dates, nah. I mean, I I mess around, I joke around, but like no no nothing nothing like silly or elaborate or anything like that. How do you feel about dating apps? I've never used one in my life. Do you think? I've never even been on one. No? No. Do you, I know of them, obviously. Yeah. I know swipe this, swipe that. <laughs> uh, do you think you swipe that- swipe and then- uh, Do you think that there's a shelf life for people on dating apps who like are on, like if you're on a dating app for like way too long? Do you see, like, is that something that you see is like when someone's trying to sell their house and it's on the market for too long? I, exactly. And then you look back and you see there's and the no And the value bids. just depreciates. Yeah, and it's depreciated. Is that what happens on like dating apps? That's what I'm asking you. Okay. Like, do you think that? I wonder if it's like that. Like, I want to, also, if you're on a dating app and you meet someone, like, then do you have to purge them all? Yeah. Do you have to like go in then and go and then like, then like, di like, like log out or like, like. Re, um, like make a new profile or something no i mean you have to like if you're dating someone like that's where you found them you're probably a, first of all let me ask you a question does do people who go on a, are they loyal to a dating site or is it like i'm going i'm low oh, no, i don't think that there's site. anything i don't think that there's anything loyal about dating apps right. i think that but if you're you go, on one are you on them all is it safe to say i would i would assume so right, right, right. like many years ago i was on a dating app yeah. i was like on raya and i was on hinge and i was like but it's all because and i would notice that it was all the same people on all the same dating apps ah. and so it didn't really matter which one you were on did they present themselves as the same across them all like same photos same like long they, just, uh, they still like long for the walks. most part same photos yeah you know same name what i really wish they had was like a rating and review section where if you went on a date with a guy and he was like really creepy and like yeah you know like Amazon. smacked his mouth the whole time yeah. yeah like like yelp or something where you could go oh, on and leave a review like, like Uber. oh yeah like johnny gets a one star because he didn't right that's he, not actually a bad idea right so no dating apps have that i've never seen it on a dating app you might be onto something. I think that if you could leave a review on people, you, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. How about well, you want to make sure they have the chance to defend themselves. But I was like, what if they don't get to see what people wrote about them? Ooh. Because then it could be true. You know what I mean? Like it could be like you'd be honest. Yeah. But then again, then someone could really just lie about you and like yeah, you know, just kind of talk trash and it maybe you know. But see, that's why more people would have to leave reviews because it's like a restaurant where one person might have a bad experience before other people might have had a great experience. Yeah, but then they, maybe you do answer because you ever see the restaurant's answer or the, like, the hotel's the answer. Yeah. Like, Thank you for your inquiry. <laughs> we promise you that you know that excellence is what we're striving if for. If you come it, back again, it'll be yeah, better. Yeah, or they just throw the other person, we know who this is leaving this and she came and she's not, like, they'll say like she was she was unhinged and she was acting like a, you could tell when people leave like a bad comment like that are also just like lunatics. Yeah. That are just like, you Toxic. Know I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. They just hate restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. I feel like I feel like dating apps should have that. Hin how is Hinge? What's hin the catch of Hinge? What's the hook of Hinge? Like, what is the premise of it? How do they? Yeah, like I understand they... Raya is for industry people, and the other one is swipe left and right is for like. It's like Tinder or something, right. and I think Tinder is more for like people looking for a quick hookup. Oh, it is. Right. They distinguish that. Well, that's what they're kind of famous for. Oh, like just like like it's, it's just to like, have sex and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So if you're on Tinder and you're like swiping, it's like just hookups and stuff. Oh, okay. It's and like Hinge is what? Hinge, they have you make a profile and then you have to like you have this like you can offer people that you're really interested like a rose. Like you can swipe hard on them and like <laughs> give them a rose. Okay. Or you can just swipe regular. Or and I think how do they know like, that you're swiping hard? Because you can offer them a rose. And then they get a rose. Oh, so the rose indicates it, says, it was a hard swipe. Like Matt has offered you a rose, which means that he was like super interested. All right, in so it's you. not in like the haptics of the phone. You don't have to be like. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. But I wish that it was. I don't yeah. know why we're not creating these apps. <laughs> so and, all right, so same, same. It's the same thing essentially. It's and, not like, and they have I know a bio. Bumble, Bumble is like you have to. Bumble had a catch, like you. The, the girl, girl had to initiate guy, right? it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, on Hinge, it's not like that. They have like a private messaging system and then there's like a bio where you can like 
makes something like funny, like my my favorite idea of a first date is, and then you fill in the blank. So yeah. you have like a little thing where people can kind of get to know you. Yeah, you know, it's not like I wouldn't have been on it. Just I, I never, I was always in a relationship when, and then we became popular, and I just I never. But it seems pretty vulnerable to put yourself out there like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I don't know if like a lot of people on there are vulnerable. You know, but maybe like it just seems weird to be like, you know, I, I like tea and. <laughs> You know, this is a picture like this is what I consider to be my best pictures. Yeah, you know, a and, lot of work yeah. and a lot of time goes into like meeting people that you don't know. I mean, because you know, within the first couple, I don't know, ten or fifteen seconds, if you're at least even attracted to someone, sure. And then you've gotten yourself into like a whole date with them. Yeah, so you could see the pictures, feel like you would imagine you may be attracted to them, right? You could still show up in the first ten to fifteen seconds and say I was wrong, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then there's no swiping out the door, right? Like immediately. But you know, of. you definitely, especially you have like your outs. Yeah. You let your friend call you or what have you. Right. Or you say that you have something to get, like maybe meet for a coffee. Yeah. And you say you have an appointment, and so if it's not going well, you exercise that appointment. What do you think is the best go to to getting out of a situation like that? What so, would you do? So being on a date like that. Yeah. If you and met this is not someone good? and you were like, Ooh. do you care about what they feel? I would assume not. Can you be frank? For sure. Okay, so I would just be like, you know what, I, you know, I'm, I'm thank you for meeting me. I don't want to waste either of our time, but like, I don't, I'm just not sure that like we would we were connecting. Would you have you ever done anything like that before? No, I'd be a complete pussy and just get a fake text <laughs> and say that I just got a disease and run or something like that. No, I would. <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't be able to tell someone to their face unless unless I felt that that person like could use it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, if like it, needed to be checked or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. would, I would check someone if they needed checking. Other than that, I would probably just do it the most innocuous way possible. You know, I just want... I, innocuous way, not innocuous. Yeah. Sorry, I, I was... It's okay. I was up late last night. That was a very tub aware moment. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> I just remember myself, I said, did I say innocuous? I saw that little bit pop up on my Instagram the other day when so, Chris was talking about tub aware. Oh, yeah, for and sure. And you checked him and you are like, it's tub aware. Yeah, it's tupper. Tupperware. Yeah, he thought it was tuboware, which I get because they're little tubs. But he's been, he was saying tuboware his whole life. I can't believe you caught that. Well, I'll tell you another thing a large contingent of the population were saying tuboware as well. You're kidding. We, we found out because it got like 80 billion views or whatever. Yeah, I was like, no, everyone I was saw. like, it's not tub. Yeah. Wow. We, I sold, I ended up selling tuboware merch after that. <laughs> I paid like three months of mortgage with the tuboware merch. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Think of some comedy duos who got it done. Kate and Peel, Cheech and Chong. What about the perfect duo when it comes to growing your business? That's you and Shopify. <laughs> Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the, did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented candles or date night outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. I like Shopify because it's so user-friendly and it's everything you need in one place. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash date, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash date now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash date. So do you consider yourself a sensitive person? Yeah. Do you, are That's you, easy. Yeah, you already know? Yeah, I'm sensitive, yeah. What is your most sensitive trait? Is there something that really makes you emotional? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I don't want to say be like, oh, I'm an empath, but I am. I'm very empathetic. Mm -hmm. So like, I, you know, it's actually I'm. It's, I'm sensitive to a fault in the way I think. I, not in, not in like relationships, but in a general sense, like I take on a lot. Yeah. Like it's hard for me to shake like a, a, a terrible news story or something tragic. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, but no, I, I I'm easy to like uh, easy. It's easy to touch my heart. Like I I'll cry like a Pep Boys commercial. <laughs> <laughs> if, it's, if it's sentimental. Do you cry in like sad movies? Oh, well, sure, yeah. Oh, well, I guess if you're crying in a Pepsi commercial. Yeah, Pep Boys, but Pepsi too. Pep Boys. 
<laughs> no, I like I'll, 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 I get emotional. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Or or if we're going for something straight emotional, like when like a dog reunites with his like soldier, oh, the soldier and he starts. Goodbye. You know, or something like that or like a young kid or like I, I, I no, I can't. I get I get I'll, I'll get visibly um, emotional. Do you consider yourself romantic? Yeah. And so much as like I, I'm not like romantic, like. Um, you know, like uh, show up with flowers and chocolate. I think that's a little bit like ha <laughs> hack. But in a general sense, I, I believe you know in, in in being in love, and I believe in being very a very good partner. Yeah. You know, and 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 always trying. You know, never never not trying. Continuing to date the person you're with is a hundred percent really important. A hundred percent. Yeah. Are you in a relationship? I am. Yeah. Y you're. I was always publicly in a relationship, but I'm married and I was never public about that until very recently. What made you want to be public about it? I didn't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> so then why aren't you? Theo has a way of getting things out of you. No, no, uh, no, 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 not at all. I, I just, I, I was talking to him and I, so, cause I, I just finished my special and so that's out now and I'm working on my new hour and I was like, I kind of want to speak about my life more. And like, I was, I was a private person before I was in the public. Mm -hmm. And so it just, you know, I don't know. I just talk. There's so much to talk about. I'm like, why ever invite my my family life or my my life into this? You know, because the privacy is like once you give it away, you don't get it back. Yeah. So I just would always say, like, you know, my persona and entertainment is one thing. But like, why necessarily do people that know me in that respect need to know my sacred personal business? You know what I mean? It wasn't something I spoke about in terms of jokes. Right. Well, I, again, in a relationship. But like. To that extent. And I'm someone who's been on, t like, in the public eye a lot. I played myself. And so I have this, like, very, very unique relationship with people that are fans or listeners or whatever of me, whatever. And it's just, like, it's it's good and bad. It's good because, like, they really are avid, loyal, like, fans. They feel like they know me. And they do. Because yeah. I, you know, I mean, while I play heightened versions of myself, they do really, after being doing comedy and TV and podcasts all this time and talking for hours about myself and them seeing me, they do have a good sense of who I am and they feel like they know me. But, and then there's the other, you know, end of that where it's like, there is no filter and they do feel a little bit, sometimes people can be a little too comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and not understand where the line is drawn. Not that they're trying to be like either malicious or weird or what have you, but yeah. you know, so, so there, I veer into that territory. So I'm just private. So I was like, I keep it to the vest. I didn't realize that it would stoke people's curiosity even more to be private, which is kind of the opposite of what I wanted. Yeah. But, you know, now that I'm going to be talking about them on stage, it's going to trickle out here and there anyway. So I was having a conversation the other day and I was just like, you know what? I actually had like massive anxiety about it because it was like, a, like to finally let the, to say that out loud after like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like years and years and well, years. Well, something of not you've been holding it. really close to you, and yeah. now you're and to give it away and to understand how that might manifest itself later. But then also to just be like, to just say that, you know, it's just, it's just to reveal something so personal. Yeah. It's personal, you know. Yeah. And I get it. You either like you, you might not have that mindset um, to begin with, or you might be an open person. But I, I'm not. You know what I mean? And so like, and I've gotten married like over the years while I was already public. So like, I didn't want to announce the marriage. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, so I just didn't say anything. And then like, like that, you know, some people are just like, oh, I wonder what's going on, you know, with him. He never talks about a relationship, whatever. And then I have my daughter and then I didn't want to say anything about that. I would say I married before the daughter just because I even want to protect her Yeah. by all means necessary. Um, but I just was like, let me, it felt right. I was having like a really like, the conversation was appropriate and it was organic and I was like, let me just control then how this comes out. You know, like I'll just s say all this. And so I, I said it and it just felt like it was the right place, the right time. So I let it go. And I, I like didn't realize that it would be news to anybody, but like, it was like big news. Like, like, I guess like, you know, all these, like these magazines that like the us and the extra and the people and all they were all like, oh, secret marriage revealed and, you know, and <laughs> child, secret child. It's like, wasn't well, that a secret child? That sounds like I had, I, like, I, I, you know. Like a child with I, someone like I had sex with all the like, yeah. made, yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, it's just I didn't say anything, but yeah, yeah. Well, do you feel like being more open about that now, you're going to, it's going to expand I've never worn your... my ring anywhere. It, I think this might be the first place I'm wearing my ring. I think that's the first time I've seen it. Yeah, I mean, I wear it in real life. I just take it off when we film because like I don't need to have a billboard of my personal yeah. life, you know. But I, in in real life, if you saw me, this is my wife, this is my kid, I, you know. No, no. But that's real life. It is, you know. Real and, life. and online is something very different that I don't think people understand in general, and especially as entertainers or whatever. I don't, you know. It's just it's 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 a job, you know.
Well, you're going to relate to a lot of people by having some more relationship for sure. content. Yeah. Because everybody's going through something. Right, right. So whatever you're going through, whenever, you know, I hope it helps you expand your uh, hour and like gives you some fresh stuff to kind of, I Absolutely. hope you feel better talking about, you know? It feels, it does feel like I always dreaded it and I didn't know if I'd ever even do it. You know, I just was like, well, let it just be the way it is. But like, it does feel like a weight is lifted now. It really yeah. does because it was like, it's not like anything that like, you know, was like bothering me, but it's like, it takes work to like keep that secret. Yeah. It does. Even when I'm out and about like to, cause people, the first thing they do is take out a video camera, take out a, you know what I mean? It's like, not like the old, like in old days it was like, Oh, can I have your autograph? Or can I say hello? It's just like, just video, just 4k video, <laughs> you know, of me eating or just like walking. <laughs> and it's like, and everyone, every single person that you, if you walk out the door, every single person has like a 4k video camera on them and they were raised in an age where they could just turn it on and video you. And it doesn't, there's no etiquette to it. Yeah. So like that takes work to keep my daughter and wife, like too close to the vest like that. You know right. I mean? Um, not that I want people now that I've said it to videotape me anyway, but like, it's just like, I just can like be like a little bit more like whatever it is. Relax it is about it, it a little is. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how did you guys meet? My 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 wife. Yeah, we were friends <clears throat> for a really long time before we even dated. Um, I used to work. At, I was a bartender. At, at one point in my life, I was a bartender, and she. I met her. She came in. Oh, really? Yeah, but at this particular place, I worked at many places. This particular place was a, like a neighborhood place. So, like, was it in New York? Yeah, and so I like I knew like all the patrons, like hundreds of like it was a very tight knit community, mm -hmm. and it was a space that for like artists, it was, like a comedy, music, like artist space and stuff. So it was like it was like we always had events, and so it was like a really like I knew everyone. So I became I have lifelong friends from that place. So that's where I met her at first, and then um, like eight years later or something, we 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 started to dating, dating. Yeah. Why? Yeah, why just, why just, did so much time go by? Well, I was in a relationship, and oh. um, and also we were, she was just That's a friend. That's the secret child. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the secret child. Right? No, no, it was we, we were just friends. I mean, she was just a friend. It wasn't like we were. It, it wasn't like we were like almost like gonna see each other. It was just she was just some person who I knew it was a friend, just like anybody else. Yeah. But then I guess when the time came and you know whatever, then we just like started dating. Yeah. How do you typically approach someone that you're interested in? Uh. You know, I feel like it's like I usually get to a point with that person where it's kind of like doesn't even need to be said. I feel like you can feel a vibe from someone and vice versa. Like chemistry. Chemistry, yeah. And I feel like, you know, you could tell if someone feels the same way. Mm -hmm. And I think at that point it feels just organic to like you feel comfortable to speak your mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas like instead of like putting it out there, like you really like someone, they have no clue and you're like, I gotta tell you something or like, or just like, <laughs> you know, be outwardly acting in a way that would include them into like, you know, if you're not just gonna outright say it, yeah. then to just give all these, you know, these signs or flirt, whatever you gotta do. It's just like, I don't know. I just think you kind of, kind of know it. Any, any relationship that I've been in that was like, more than just whatever, like just right. even more than, a, you know, was always just like a mutual thing that just was like, Oh yeah, you, you could tell they both. We both felt it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe in zodiac sign love connections? You know, I I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just the, <laughs> I love that there was eh. there was a whole thought there, and then no. Because I kind of like want to believe in things, you know. <laughs> like, I like I started seeing this guy. I started seeing this guy. I, <laughs> Yeah, so let me tell you about another secret. He was a Virgo. No, no. So a, a pal of mine, she recommended this guy who he is. He used to be like a nautical, uh, not a nautical, like a NASA engineer, like this super fit, smart guy. And then he like like started to um, study like feng shui. Is that yeah. say feng, feng, feng shui? Feng, feng shui. Feng shui. F e n g. Like that, yeah. oh, feng shui. It's like the where things go for like good good vibes, right? Yeah, it's like I think it's be like the like the the way in which you set up your living space in order to flow and ha like take that was a much better description <laughs> <laughs> to, to absorb everything the energies that like that are, are to maximize energy and to put yourself in a position where you're living your best like you know whatever yeah and this guy became like some crazy expert in it and he, he over years he developed this his own system of like projections and numbers and stats and it goes by your birth date and time and all that stuff and it's not um horoscopy as he explains it, but it is just understanding um, literally like coordinates. He gets the coordinates of where you live and like the time that you were born. And he just like, he basically can tell you not like reading the future, but like when 
you should be thriving, when you should say yes to things, when you should say no to things, like yeah. that. And he kind, kind of, of like, like a psychic almost. But he's not a psychic. He'll say that. And I, like, I was, I, my friends telling me this thing, and and she's like her and her, her guy, and she was like, you don't understand. Like he told us this, and he was right. And, and for the last two years, he's been right about everything. And she went down this list, and apparently he's booked up. Like you can't even see this guy for like a year, and he's. Like he does this, he's hired by CEOs, corporations, like huge A-list actors and like people like, and like he's like known and like, and he has this track record, this amazing track record. So I had a lot of big decisions to make and some big life things coming up. And so I met with him. Oh my God. I know, right? And he immediately like, and I was like, look, I'm, I'm like, I'm not like, I'm not like hook, line and sinker. Like I'm like, this feels like if anything, it'll be interesting I'll see what he has to say. I'll take everything with a grain of salt. But like, you know, and me and my lady too. And we and so we went and I got to tell you, this guy starts reading. He got all of our information and he starts telling us these projections and when things, and he starts saying things about us and our relationship and things in general and bringing up some dates that he would have never known. And like, again, not psychic, but he said all these things that like immediately resonated. So it was a kind of weird. Yeah, it really was. And then I followed up with him again and, um, there were some things that was I got, I have a follow up due now because like there were some things that were like supposed to happen and like they didn't not happen but like it's hard to explain. He's like between this date and this date you're going to see a surge in like this like opportunity or money or whatever and like it's weird because it like happened like in our, so I don't really I don't like so this all this to tell you that I don't believe in like <laughs> in like horoscopes or anything like that but like I really like with all my might want to believe this guy can read some type of like, I don't even know what it is. Maybe it's like a biorhythm. I don't know what it is. Well, did he Energy. help design your place or anything? Yeah, so he essentially, he also tells you like, don't live there. What? Because I was building a home. And so he he reads it and he, and he tells you like, which way to face the home itself. Or like if you already live there, like if, if if you should be living there, if it's bad energy or not, or like how to then then if you then then how to arrange the house and what to have nearby and like yeah. all these different things. So we're, we're I'm still like in the thick of this with him, and I was like, I'll get a follow up with you because I have this follow up with him because I want to be like, well, what happened there? Because you said, you know, what I mean? <laughs> and I just want to see like what comes of it. But yeah, but like it's I'm not above like you know like listening to so like like you yeah. know. Yeah. But this was a really cool experience. That is cool. Yeah, and it's wild. He takes out this system, and there's like numbers. It's like a beautiful mind, and he's got all these like he like it's just something he developed over time. And the thing about it is, is that the reason why he's so successful and gets paid and like all these is because he's accurate. That you know, it's it's weird when things are like that yeah. over and over and over. Like the accuracy about something. Yeah, it was weird. It does get a little weird, and it's like. How much of it is true? You know, if yeah. he's like doing numerology yeah. and he's like. And he goes, he, he brought up two dates in the beginning. He's like, I don't know what these are. He's like something, this date and this date come, come, comes to the forefront <clears throat> of my mind. And the two dates he said were two significant dates, specific dates that he would have no idea that they were significant. And I was just like, and that was one of the first things he said. And I was like, hold on now. <laughs> All right, let me listen. And then he's like, you're going to have, had no idea. This was like months ago. And he's like, around this time and he pinpointed like a three week span yeah and he's like i see like something here happening in your career that is like it's going to be like a bigger moment or something big's happening here i don't know what it, he had no idea that i was even doing a special and he named the window of the time that my special was going to be released Man, this was like oh it gives this me chills like, to like, think about yeah and this was like i mean like i like six seven eight months like he did it that far like there's no way he could have no known. one knew but me and like he said, and I'm like, oh, wow. So it's and not I, like it was like online where he could have searched. No, and I didn't even tell him anything. I didn't say that date you said meant anything. And I didn't say, oh, wow, like that's what my special, like I just kept it all to myself until like the end. Because I wanted, to, I didn't want him to take take cue from what I was saying. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, like, you didn't want to give him any ammo. You're like, if right, you're going to be real, right, you right. need to like know some yeah, shit. Yeah, and then yeah, he ended up knowing pretty, some shit. It was pretty impressive, man. Man, that is crazy. Yeah, well, now I need to know what happens with that follow-up call. Yeah, I'll let you know. How much screen time? This is like a, a way different question. Yeah. When you're on a date with someone, uh, how much screen time is appropriate? Zero. If someone pulls out their phone, it's a red flag. No, uh, if they need to be like, oh, I just need to just check if I got a text, like or something, like, something important. Yeah. That's fine, you know. But if they're just like on their phone, isn't that weird? To anybody? I would. I I feel the same way. I'm like, yeah. for our date, like get off your phone. Wait until we're like together. 
and yeah, you're yeah. like, where well, this is more casual and you're not trying to like impress me, you know? Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, if it's contextual, if you're like, oh, I got to show you this or something, but like, what are you saying? Like I'm, I'm, I'm eating like a chicken wing and I look over and they're like just swiping. <laughs> no, nah, no way. No How way. do you feel about a TV in a bedroom? Yeah, I get, I get why you wouldn't have one, but, uh, I have one. I mean, I don't, you know, I sometimes I, I need it to fall asleep. Yeah. You know I mean? or, but I'm not like in there watching TV or whatever. But I do know that as I'm as I'm redoing the new space I'll be in, I probably will either have it like hidden, you know, or like one of those like like ones that look like art. With a picture frame around yeah, it? Yeah, and that's just for my mental clarity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is this a new house that you... So hold on. Let's go back to the, the Zodiac sign guy. Yeah, so yeah. he told you not to move there when you were building a house. So did you go somewhere else? No, he didn't tell me not to move. He got the coordinates and then told me to like move it a little bit this way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. No joke. And did you? Yeah. <laughs> and has anything happened? Well, I don't live there yet. I did it theoretically on the plans. Okay, so yeah. it wasn't like they had to I don't move live the foundation. In this space. No, I don't live in this space yet. Okay, so I was. That's why I saw him when I did because that you were building. Yeah, because that's that time to, for him to be like, yeah. no, 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 don't put that window there. Yeah, yeah. No, I. <laughs> I was yeah. like bad window. Yeah. Do like, not go. He's like, what is this? I'm like a door. He's like, not anymore. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> that is. So incredibly funny. Uh, I'll let you know how it goes. I mean, I'm still, by the way, I think the place is like cursed because like I, I, I found it three years ago and I still, I'm still, I thought I'd be living there right now and I'm not even, I didn't even begin yet because I had so much, don't ever, this is set, like, I was like, you know what? Save my, I've saved money my whole entire life. I've never really, I live in a condo right now. Like I'm like, and like now I have the dog and now, like, now it's time to have a place. Yeah. And I looked around there, but it's so hard to like find a space that like, like, I don't know, I'm so particular. And so to find a space that exists already from someone else that didn't need a lot of work done, that would need what I need out of it, I just, I, I did a lot of searching and I found it really hard. And I was like, well, why do I need to like, maybe I'll maybe I'll start looking for an old place that I could knock down and make my own. Like kind of renovate? Yeah, or just build. Yeah. Renovate or build, you know, and like add on to it. And then I was like, so I started searching like that and I found the, the, the craziest piece of land. And I was like, this is right. And so I started this journey of like building from scratch. Yeah. Like literally conceiving the house in my head and working with a team to like make it. Oh, like, and we, 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 we developed it over like a year. Like we met every week and it was like, they would go away and come back. And, and so it was like a crazy fun process, but I'll I would never do it again. It sounds exciting and exhausting. It's completely exhausting. And then at the end of the day, things didn't go right. We had to switch people on the team. And, and like, here I am, and I thought I'd be living there. And, like, we didn't even, like, do demo work on the old home yet. And wow. It's been three years. And I thought I'd be living there, like, a year already. So how when is it? Is it going to be done soon? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> what? Like, I feel like I'm at least a minimum of two plus more years out. Because they say it'll take 18 months to build. That's a complete lie. Yeah. They just, it'll never happen. So then figure two, but we didn't begin yet. Like, at the end of the day, when this finally, like, when the dust settles on this thing, I'm going to be like, have been working on this thing for like six years or some shit like that. Like, and when I got, when is I- it, Is this a mansion? Are you building like a huge No, it's house? not necessarily about the size of it. Although it's, you know, it's a decent size, but it's just like- it's all the permitting and the all oh. the like the bidding out and like the pricing it and like all the like inflation and interest rates. When I when I had this idea, the interest rates were three point two five and there was no inflation. It was like mid. It was like the like the the back end of COVID, like 20, late twenty one. Yeah, you know. And I'm like, you know what? That's when because I, I was gonna move to like to Manhattan. I was like. Just a, you know, and I was like, I want to, I want a yard with a pool yeah, and a fireplace. And like, I want to have, I, I like hosting. Hell yeah. I like having, I like host dinner party. And I have people over. I like people to come out of town, stay with me as yeah. long as they want. And so I was like, I'm not going to be able to do that in like a space in the city. Yeah. And so we found this piece of property and everything. And so I started, you know, but like at, at, at this point, it's just been like, it's kind of nightmarish. Yeah, because it's like, it's so expensive too. Like you don't realize any little thing you do, any little thing is like cost so much money and then there's a trickle down effect and everything and I'm learning all this as I go. Right. And so like in hindsight, I have to stay the course now because I'm like too far into it, but I'm still like, it's been hanging over my head and we're not even, we didn't even begin. So it's like, not you know, I just hope that one day I'm like, I am sitting in it and I'm like, it was all, <laughs> one day? It was all worth it, you know? I'm all <laughs> feng shui out, 
<laughs> Your daughter's going to be going to college. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, but you know, well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to check back in with you on a lot of, on a lot of yeah, topics. I yeah, I feel like we're going to have to have a second date. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, really quickly, I'll do a little tasting menu. So you just say the first thing that comes to your head. Yeah. Um, are you an alpha or a beta? I don't, I don't label. You're an alpha. Shower or bath? I can't, you're not a beta. Come on. No, but I don't, but I don't, I don't subscribe to, to that at all. Like what do you I, mean? I'm whatever I need to be whenever I need to be it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like, whoa, whoa, I'm a guy. Or I'm not like, I'm like, <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> You know, it is what it is, you know, like, like I'll, some people are like, oh, he's sensitive beta. It's like, no, some will be like, no, actually, admit he's sensitive. That's not a beta. You know, who? I don't get caught up in that. Okay. You know, like, I don't, why would I, I don't want to label myself either of those things. I think either of them is kind of like, why, tack, it's so tacky to label myself well, we'll scratch, an alpha. We'll scratch that question off my menu. Now yeah. I don't want anyone to feel labeled. No, no, I don't give a shit what anyone else feels. You know, like I just, for me, I just. I just, it just feels weird for me to be like, well, I, I you know, historically I'm alpha, but uh, I have beta moments. So. <laughs> <laughs> it almost feels like you're like, are you a tough guy or a pussy? Like, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's just, I'm just me, you know, like, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> what's your favorite car? Car? Like the model of car? Yeah. That I've owned or like, just like in, in a general. fantasy world? I don't know. I, I'm not, you know, I, um, I, 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 I don't know. I've had some really shit cars, you know. Yeah. I had like five cars that like just stopped while I was driving them before I got my first new car. <laughs> well, would you go for a classic car or like a oh, new yeah, model? Oh yeah, I love a classic car. Yeah, I like a classic car. Yeah, classic cars are cool. Yeah, I like like an old, like an old convertible, maybe like an like an old convertible Mustang or yeah. like an old pickup truck or something like mm -hmm. a really old one, you know, or yeah. an old Bronco, like a really old Bronco. I was gonna buy like a refurbished one. That that would be cool. Yeah, Broncos are very Texas. I feel like when I see them, and I see a lot of them in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not like a a car guy per se. Yeah, you know. Do you take the subway a lot? Yeah, most of the time in New York. Yeah, yeah I feel like that's like the like such a perk. If we had a subway, I'd be on that subway all the time. I mean, you taste piss when in the air, but yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. but you used in to it, summer, right? In the summer, it's rough. In the summer, it's with rough. the heat and the steam down there. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. And then there's some, you know, unsavory types. Yeah. But you know, a good, a good, uh, a good uh, subway experience is nothing to t shake a, a stick at. You know. <laughs> you know when, when you get it's like when, entertainment when you down get there. Good, when you get good timing, you know, you get down there. There's, maybe there's some great music going on. The thing pulls right up. You get on the seat. It's ice cold. All of a sudden, you're on a you're on an express. You didn't even know. You get somewhere early. It's like two bucks. It's not bad. Yeah. You know, there's pros and cons down there. Yeah. You know? But then there's also, you know, then there's just like I said, it's also like you literally taste urine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why people just decide to use the bathroom down there. There's so many other corners. They use it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, over in New York. They use yeah. the bathroom everywhere. Just like giant. Well, do you take the subway when you go? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love the subway. Yeah, I mean, a rush hour subway, though, when you're packed in like sardines and everybody's touching each other and everything. Yeah. That's fairly gross to me. I feel like I've just gotten really lucky and I haven't spent tons of time in New York. Yeah. So whenever I'm going somewhere, it's usually I'm just hopping on and off. Yeah. But I've missed a few subway, like a few a few of them because there's been so many people trying to get on that I just have to wait for the next one. Yeah. How's your subway acumen? Oh, I don't know what acumen means. Uh, how are you as far as like um, routing yourself in the subway? Like, cause oh. it, could, it could get a little tricky navigating, like yeah. getting off at like a main hub and then trying to find like the connecting line. Yeah, yeah. And understand if you're going uptown or downtown. And I spend <coughs> a significant amount of time. Yeah. Like understanding which line and which where to go. When I get into the subway and I get on the trains, I'm golden. Right. My hardest part is finding which side of the street yeah, yeah, yeah. is the right side to go down. That fucks me up. Right, 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 right. Because I 100% of the time will get on the wrong side of the street first. And it's almost like, so I leave five minutes early just because I expect. Yeah, you got to just, you, you. that's good. That's smart that you leave a little early. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's my hardest part. I could see it for someone not from New York. I could see it being pretty like maybe a little overwhelming. Like, the north and the south side or like yeah. whatever. And I don't feel like it's clearly labeled. Yeah. Sometimes it's not. You're right. <laughs> Sometimes it's not. So yeah. I'm like, uh, no idea where I'm going. Yeah. 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 But um, no, but if you're from New York, it's like a necessity. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I'll ask you my dessert question. How did you propose to your wife? Um. I did it. Uh, she she just wasn't expecting it. I um, 
we were we knew we were you know we knew we would get married. It wasn't like a shock that I proposed or anything, but she just didn't know like when it was coming. And then um, I it was just a, like in the summer, and I, I invited both of our families over for the evening for like dinner and to just hang out, which is not uncommon. Yeah. But I invited everybody knowing that I I, I you know was going to propose to her I, before they got there, and we were cooking. I just proposed out of nowhere, just in, in our kitchen, in our home, because it's like, I like making memories in the space that we live in, you know? Yeah. So I was like, you know, I thought about it for a while, where where I would do it, when I would do it, and how. And then I just kept coming back to, I think it'd be special to do it just very organically at home where we live, you know, where we, you know, can see where it happened every single day. Like, you know right. what I mean? Where our families are and everything. So I just did it. We were cooking. I just did it in the kitchen, and she, like, was a complete shock, and then, like, 20 minutes later, family started to arrive and no one knew. Oh, so you did it before the family was yeah. there. And so as they all came in and in groups, we'd be like, we surprised, you know. We'd oh, like, that's yeah, so nice. cool. I had asked her parents first. Yeah. You know, but I don't know if they knew exactly when I was doing it, but I did ask. She was a, she went away on a trip to like India or something and I had them over and asked them. Yeah. 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 And where did you guys go on your honeymoon? Uh, we went to Australia and Fiji. Which one did you like more? Um, two different things. Australia was just like, uh, Fiji was on the way home. Mm -hmm. So it was like, let's get that tropical thing in it. But we went, in Australia, we went to like five or six places and it was unreal. Really? Yeah, we went to like, you know, we went to the the, the, the desert and all that stuff. And we went to um, the coral reef and we went to like Sydney and Melbourne and all that stuff like so that. So you really did Australia? Yeah, we were there for like three weeks. Oh, wow. Well, I wouldn't go, there. I would not fly there if I wasn't going to be there for like at least three weeks. It's so far. Yeah, it's too much. And then my, you know what's so funny? It's like honeymoon, right? So it's like, okay, we're going there. First class tickets, right? I yeah. Mean, it's, it's our honeymoon, right? But it's freaking Australia. So the first class ticket is like, in, like a little bit, it's unreasonable. Yeah. <laughs> and I, we get on this plane and uh, my seat's broken right it's a massive plane and it's sold out and i get there and i go to sit on my seat and it's like it's completely uncomfortable and i look and i and the whole entire cushion just comes right off and there's like springs and stuff and i'm like wow so i like rang the bell before we took on like hey my seat's broken and that lady's like oh and she's like let me get somebody from maintenance and then they send this guy over he comes in like a little orange vest he's like oh all right he leans down he's looking he's like yeah I, something i could do about this and I was like, okay, so what does that mean? He's like, I, I go, so I get, get moved. And it, this, she's like, there's no other seats to move you. And I was like, this is my honeymoon. This is a first class flight ticket that I bought to Australia. Like, what are you going to do? And she's like, I'll give you some blankets. And then she lifted the seat and put the blankets in the springs. And then she put the seat like on top of it. And I had no choice. It was like a 16 hour, a 17 hour, whatever the flight was. And I just <laughs> sat on this this seat that caved in completely with like springs right up my asshole. <laughs> oh no. Literally for like You the weren't inside. supposed to get fucked on the flight. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then she, like three hours into the flight, she comes home. She's like, we're just really sorry. We'd like to offer you something. And I was like, I thought she was going to be like thousands and, of dollars back. Like and she gave me a bottle of cheap champagne. Oh my God. That I God. didn't even open. Like I just, I was like, oh, thank you. This should do it. Thank you. Oh, you know what? This springs feels feels less intrusive right now in my fucking asshole, and it'll be great. I can. I just. I was. I was just. And I. I, I was gonna go through the whole thing of like calling and like. I was just like, I'm not doing this. You did it. I just let it go. I think I would have called. Yeah. I think I would have. No, it was like the price of a Kia Sportage. That's what I mean. Yeah. I would have been like, hey. Yeah. This was a big deal. You guys, I don't spend money. Like that's crazy. That's stupid. Even that's if you why. make good money, like I can't. You know, you still have. You understand what the dollar means. Yeah. But it's like I worked my whole life for this. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, I'm an adult. I'm like in my 40s. I'm like, I'm gonna spend this money, and we're gonna do it the right way. Yeah. And then the seat was fucking broken. Oh, I would have. I would have done exactly what you did. Only I would have called afterwards, and would've. I would have been yeah. like. I, I just kind of like didn't want to, it was so disappointing that I didn't want to live in the space anymore. I understand. You know? I really do. I yeah. to, I have, I have I got let, there and I was like, I'm off and I'm putting it behind me. Yeah. Yeah. I took the spring out of my asshole and I just. <laughs> went <on> my <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on my yeah, show. It, was fun. it went so fast. I know. I will. I would love to have a second date with you. I need a recap. Yes. On. On uh, this guy and what happens with your house. I'll recap everything. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. We'll let everyone over you. They can find you. Yes. So I'm um, on tour right now. It's called Everything's Fine. It's a brand new hour from the special that's out right now. So if you've ever seen me on any of my tours, this is, you, you have not seen this material. Uh, SalvoCanoComedy.com is my website. It's called Everything's Fine Tour. And then my special right now is called Terrified. It's on YouTube. Check it out. It's free. Um, it's, it's fun. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I'm still touring a little bit more t- through August with the with the guys from my show, the Jokers. It's the last leg of this tour that we've been doing for two years. So you can see us through August. Those tickets also at SalvoCanoComedy.com. And the new season of uh, my show, season 11, begins on July 11th. Sick. Yeah, man. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's guys, thanks for watching. We will see you next time. First date, baby. Are you really drinking a glass of milk with dinner? First date. 